Okay, so this is going to be my review of Transformers Prime, Rage of the Dinobots. Now, for those who don't know what this is, uh, Transformers Prime, the, the IDW Transformers Prime comics, which I think have been discontinued? I'm not sure, but I think they have. I don't know. But basically what Transformers Pro the Transformers Prime comics were, weren't so much as they were like secret tales of the Transformer Prime comics. They were more like... Uh, I think it was kind of cool too because it, it was in continuity with the Transformers Prime cartoon, but it didn't focus on the. Tr it wasn't like with the the uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated adventures. It was more like uh, okay, this is what's happening on. Or you can see on TV what was going on on Earth between the Autobots and Decepticons, but there was a lot of stuff still going on in on Cybertron, and that's what this story is all about. Um, it focuses on the Dinobots. And you have to remember that Fall of Cybertron and the Cybertron games were in continuity with the Transformers Prime cartoon. And in here, this follow this bridges the gap of what happened to Grimlock and the other Dinobots after the events of the fall after the events of Fall of Cybertron. We find out that they're on they were still on Earth. I mean, on Earth, Cybertron, along with a lot of auto with a lot of tra Autobots and Decepticons who didn't make it off the planet necessarily. They didn't make it off the planet because uh, oh, it was only the Ark and the Nemesis that got away. And what happened was that uh, a lot, Ultra Magnus has had the Dinobots working for him as they're attempting to leave off world, but. However, something goes, and they're try and it starts out with Ultra Magnus and the other Dinobots trying to cut a path for auto other Autobots to escape off-world and among the stars. However, this all kind of goes wrong when a new vil when the when Ultra Magnus is shot down by a new villain called Sir Ket. Why didn't he, they apparently say it was female? But you don't know that till part two, and you're like, really? That that's female? It's hard to explain Sir Ket's design, but she's kind of like the um. The Predacon action, the Predacon figure Ripclaw, with a long attacking tail, but she, it, it again, it looked like a male. I thought it was a, I couldn't differentiate. I was like, oh, it's a female, okay. Anyway, Sir Ket is from this race of beings created by Shockwave called the Forge, and the Forge destroy, shoot down Ultra Magnus and attract the Dinobots to go and rescue him. Now, the Dinobots in here are a lot more. Uh, are a lot different from their G1 counterparts, obviously. Like, Snarl is the team's engineer and medic. He's the br Snarl is the smart one of the group. Swoop's the young rookie, uh, Snarl, uh, uh, Slug, Slug, who most of you guys remember as Slag. Slug is a, just the, he is out of control. He is, he is shoot first and ask questions never, and Sludge is... The dumb one. Well, not necessarily dumb. He's more like, oh, I'll take orders from Grimlock, okay. And Grimlock is very intelligent. He is a very good leader, and the Dinobots are completely loyal to him, because more or less when they were ripped apart by Shockwave and turned into the Dinobots, the rest of the Autobots were like, you're not one of us, you're monsters. And that kind of brought them together as a close brotherhood. And they even say, like, you know, why should we help Ultra Magnus? He was one of the... Uh, he was... You know, he's one of the types of Autobots that kind of laughed at us. And then Grimlock responds with, You know what, you're right. I'm not going to force you guys to go, but if you leave, you're pretty much saying, you know, you're pretty much confirming everything the Autobots said about us. So they go to rescue Ultra Magnus, and what happens is that, Sir K that they encounter a Predacon, who is one of the races of the Forge, and they kidnap Swoop. And we find out that. Uh, the rest of the Dinobots are trying to rescue Sir, fr uh, uh, Swoop from Sir Cat as long as well as Ultra Magnus, and they go to the Sea of Rust. It's really cool to see uh, all of the Dinobots team up and really have these cool conversations. It also is cool to see how the uh, the Dinobot forms work because Grimlock is when he's in his T Rex mode, he is at that's his Berserker rage. And that's where we get to see me, Grimlock, me, King, because his intelligence is lowered and he's just out of control. Sir Ket, if this is remember, guys, this is a four-issue story, and for four issues, it's really good. It's very self-contained. Now, but getting back to Sir Ket, Sir Ket is a she's a good villain, but she only is for two parts because spoilers, she dies, uh, she gets butchered by Grimlock, and for the next two issues. 
Well, actually, no. The really the the last issue was all about Shockwave. Sir Kent's just a you know an underling that even Shockwave was like, eh, well, I can make better. And Shockwave in here is deadly. He clearly shows that he can get the upper hands on the Dinobots. Like, he cr comes at him with a force field, an EMP bomb, and the Dinobots get kicked around a lot. And, among other things, we also find out that that face, uh, that Grimlock's face, quote-unquote, is really nothing more than a faceplate. Yeah, we actually get to see Grimlock's actual face. Which was like, whoa, that was, that was interesting. Uh, a lot of stuff happens. I don't want to spoil exactly what happened to Swoop. He doesn't die, necessarily, but something obviously happens to Swoop that leads to Sir Cat's death. And when they say... When this title was very good at saying Rage of the Dinobots, because the Dinobots just go out all out on Rage, Ultra Magnus is in here, and he depends on the he depends on the Dinobots because he understands that these guys can tear through anything, and the, he... He uh, he needs them to work. He needs to work with them. It's not like oh, I'm working with you until we get out. No, he understands the power of the Dinobots, and he actually respects Grimlock because Grimlock follows orders. And it is cool to see him work. It is cool to see Magnus. He is kind of uptight, but he understands the. He he just needs to point the Grim the Dinobots in the right direction, and they'll take care of the rest of the work. But yeah, Shockwave pretty much also captures the Dinobots and says to Grimlock, you know, you are my greatest creation and all that. And he really much wants to lobotomize Grimlock and make him nothing more to a monster. And this kind of builds more into Beast Hunters of what he wanted to do. We also get this, see this sudden scene where the Dinobots break in just as Grimlock's about to be lobotomized and they brutally kill Shockwave. And I'm like, wait a minute, if this is in continuity with Transformers Prime, how can they kill off Shockwave when he comes back? Glad, uh, glad the comic book answered that, because then we find out that, Shock, that that wasn't Shockwave they killed. It was an avatar of Shockwave. Shockwave literally pulled a Brainiac and has now uploaded his consciousness into multiple Shockwave bodies. Holy shit, like I, did, like, like I said, he pulled a Brainiac, or, an Ultr or better yet, he pulled an Ultron and uploaded his consciousness into different robot bodies. And he, it still says, yeah, I'm still wor I'm still hidden out. My real body's safe. And yeah, you're never going to catch me. Ah, nah, 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 nah. So it ends with pretty much uh, where it left off to begin Season 3, where, the, where Ultra Magnus leaves, to, leaves from Cybertron. Meanwhile, the Dinobots stay on Cybertron to d protect and rescue other Autobots that are still trapped on Cybertron. So all in all, I know I spoiled a lot of this comic book, but it is something you have to read for yourself. If you loved Transformers Prime and hate to see it go, and you really hated how the, the Dinobots were treated in, in Age of Extinction, uh, I would say pick this up. Like I said, if you're a fan of Transformers, the Dinobots, and you hated what they saw in Age of Extinction, you love Transformers Prime, pick this up. This is really good. I love the chemistry. It's even, even though it's a short four-part story, there's a lot in here, and you really get to see how the team works and interacts with one another and why they depend so much on each other. So this is really good. I absolutely love this. The artwork is really good. Um, it wasn't trying to. The artwork isn't trying to copy the animated show, but it has the designs in there, if that makes any sense. So all in all, like I said, really cool. This was real. This was a lot of fun. As a fan of the trans is uh, Transformers Prime, the Dinobots, and Transformers in general, I was I very much like this. And even though if, even if you haven't watched a lot of Transformers Prime, if you know the general sense of Transformers, I would say this this could be cool, and this might get you into Transformers Prime as well. But yeah, I know there's Transformers Prime. There's what they did with Beast Hunters. There's a, and I've been looking for that, but I can't find it. So I will. I hope to find that as well. But anyway, th like I said, really good. If you loved it, if you love Transformers Prime, pick this up. It's a cool uh, spin-off piece, and yeah, it does it does not disappoint. Anyway, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'm out.